Hello and welcome to the Ask BR on Selvar Agavan's 7G Rainbow Colony. Prem Chanmugam asks, while even 7G was about a hero stalking a girl, why was this still enjoyable versus similar movies that are now rightly detested? Was it because the hero gets reformed and responsible in the end? I think context is everything. Uh, 7G to me is a very different film from something like Remo, where stalking is just a cool way to get the girl. Uh, if you look at the genre called stalker films, unfortunately there is that genre. This uh, 7G is more like Ranjana, where the Dhanush character does bad things, you know, sees other people suffer and learns from them. So this is that kind of movie. To me, a Sigapuro Jackal is a far more misogynistic movie than a 7G Rainbow Colony, because Kamal's character is hurt by women and therefore he turns into a misogynist and a killer but yet he's shown as very cool and captivating and charming despite the fact that we see this other facet of his whereas in this film we are in no doubt about how the world sees Kadir the hero these rascals have to be taught a lesson and even he knows this so to me, 7G begins as a story of a boy who's a stalker and then turns into the story of his transformation. Now another question arises, should we even show these things on screen? Which leads me to Fusion Jin's question, while many Tamil films celebrate stalking, do you think this movie took stalking to a whole new another level? Uh, okay, now look at this scene, right? <laughs> And then in this scene where Kadir and Anita are in a bus and there's a sudden break and his hand accidentally falls on her chest. <laughs> so in addition to berating Kadir, Anita also hauls up the public for not doing anything. <laughs> So again, I think the film certainly depicts stalking, but it also shows what women think about it, how they are affected, which 99% of the stalker films don't. Now, if you think such behavior should not be shown on screen at all, that's a different argument. And yes, some viewers are going to, uh, you know, miss the nuances and just take away the message probably that stalking is cool. But for me, I just think uh, it's enough that the film recognizes the hero as an undesirable person. <laughs> Sanjeev Jayakumar asks, do you feel this was one of the more nuanced and fresh portrayals of a father-son relationship in Tamil cinema? And he talks about the hero Honda offer letter scene. Yes, this was a terrific uh, father-son relationship uh, because we feel for the father. Over the mission, I'm the You, I'm going to the house. Then we get the hero Honda offer letter scene, which I think made all of us cry. If a veil got a short pass on my pace now, China Mapa Kashika and Nadikara and Nikamata. But the father is not completely idealized, you know. We also get another side of the father where we see that the man is not a saint. In a pay the Adichina Sulvara Tavra, or Nalvar the Pakat Lok on the Anba Pesamata. In a car, why sir, the blade is secret mind to our land at Chari. So this is really good character writing. Also, I think the film really captures the awkwardness that sometimes exists between fathers and sons really well. and Films asks, though the things that the hero and his gang do are portrayed like they were despised by and laughed upon, do you think the first song, Nam Vaidak Vandom, in a way validates their actions? It's a great question, but I think the film makes us see both points of view. So yes, we do laugh at the hero and his pals in the song. <laughs> But that's because also they are boys. You know, the film shows all sides of them. The despicable side of stalking is definitely shown. But they are also youngsters. They are young boys. They are, they are in their formative years. And they are losers, which is how the world sees them. So that is what we see in the song as well. Just like we saw the dad from multiple points of view, we are also seeing these boys from all points of view. The good, the bad, and the in-between. Ambika Natarajan asks, Every time I watch the movie, I realize how the protagonist role is tailor-made for Dhanush. Ravi Krishna's fumbling in the movie, uh, despite that the movie soars because of Selva. You know, sometimes even if one is not a great actor, sometimes a part fits a person, like an actor, and therefore the person does well. Uh, that's the case for me here. I really like Ravi Krishna in this particular scene. I'm very happy, sir. 
எவ்வளவோ சொல்லி பார்த்தேன் but i went alone and avail sometimes the rawness of an actor can really work well for a part i think this was one of those cases sada suryan says i think you should talk about 70s music even has given his best to selva i think this is the case of a director and his composer being in perfect sync uh, the lush score is another aspect i think where we don't feel the stalking as heavily as we feel in other films and the regular stalk of films and even's use of the heavenly choir kind of hints towards the end what the end of the film is going to be but i like even the small bits like this part where uh, kadir rings the doorbell so that anita wakes up to study for an exam i think even this little piano bit is really good Ashu Taki says Sonia Agarwal performed amazingly this movie she acted like a best friend guide sister mother while being a sacrificing beloved all the same time don't you think such prominent role should be written and encouraged more in an industry where hero worshiping has always been the norm okay as much as i like this film you have to admit that this very conception of the heroine is some kind of hero worshiping because we saw this in Tamasha as well though to a much milder degree the heroine is nothing but an angel who's been put on earth just so that the hero can get over his issues that's all her function is at most we can say that unlike many other films about stalking anita does not fall for this man after a couple of songs uh, she begins to soften towards him not even fall in love but soften towards him just about the interval point which is about an hour and a half into the movie enak inda manip kekkradha illa pidikadhu but nee romba nalla ponnu ungitta kekkradha thappu illa na unna romba torture pannta ellathukku mottama sorry okay but it's still very much a kind of a male fantasy and i wouldn't call this a progressive role exactly i mean look at the scene Gotcha. Like it, na? Now, like, you and I kiss, good, good, no? Okay. Bye. So it's like she sees all men are after this one thing and so maybe Kadir is not evil after all because even Kishore wants the same thing if that's the choice that she has I feel really sorry for her Legend Navini Fai says what do you think of the sudden death of Sonia which is a random accident unrelated to the story is it for shock value I don't think it is for shock value right from the beginning we are being shown that Anita's family is very controlling and they have debts then they want her to marry this Kishore guy who's very rich and can help them tide over their financial difficulties Anita ஒரு ஹெல்ப் பண்றியா நீ கிஷோருக்கு போன் பண்ணி இந்த மாசமும் அவங்க அப்பாவே வட்டி கட்டுவாரான்னு அப்படியே ஜாடியா கேட்டு பாரு So once her mother gets to know about Anita and Kadir they actually vacate the house and move away and now Anita knows how the rest of her life is going to be So even after she makes love with Kadir this is what she says ஊருக்கு போலாம் நீ உன் வீட்டுக்கு போ நான் என் வீட்டுக்கு போறேன் நடக்கிறது நடக்கட்டும் because she knows that her father has had two heart attacks she feels guilty about that long before jesse and vinay tandi varvaya we are seeing a heroine who is you know going this way that way this way that way she's unable to kind of make up her mind and uh, until we get to the statue of the pieta which is michelangelo's statue showing jesus after the crucifixion on mary's lap it is about the connection it is about the communion between man and god if you want therefore you could see this end sonia agarwal's death as a higher power stepping in just like jesus died for a man's sins this uh, anita this angel sent dies for kadir's sins so you could see it like this to complete his transformation as i said earlier this character is an angel put on earth to kind of complete his transformation and when she dies she is dressed in white and see what her father says at the end ah kadavul sir inga veetu kadavul sir you bond something to think about right it's like her grace is always with him Ramya Patasati says there is a scene where he peeks uh, into her bedroom which is very creepy is this a sign of perversion which is very typical in Selva Raghavan's movie yes it is most certainly a creepy scene but it's also the kind of scene that allow us a glimpse into the director's head i wouldn't call it perversion exactly maybe a fetish what the hell hey hey inga inga enna pandra because the whole film is about the tug of war between friendship and romance between love and lust na unne unne da yosichittirundha நீ என்ன லவ்வோடு தொடரியா இல்ல லஸ்டோடு தொடரியான்னு ஒரு பர்சன்ட் லஸ்ட் இருந்தா கூட அது ரேப்புக்கு சமானம் வாட் ஐ லைக் அபவுட் இட் இஸ் செல்வர் ஆகுவன் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் புட்ஸ் இன்செல்ஃப் அவுட் தேர் அண்ட் எக்ஸ்ப்ளோர்ஸ் திஸ் இன்ஸ்டர் ஆஃப் ஜஸ்ட் கிவிங் அஸ் அ சீரிஸ் ஆஃப் வாட் யூ கால் கிரீபி ஷார்ட்ஸ் இதோ இவனுக்கு ஒரு தங்கச்சி இருக்கே 
ஏன் பொண்ணையும் தங்கச்சி மாதிரி நினைச்சிருக்க கூடாதா ஹா Ajay it says I personally find Selva Raghavan very uninhibited in his filmmaking process barring a few exceptions do you feel 7G's is purest work I ask this as he has made madder films like Airith or one but somewhere he could not touch a soft spot as he did with 7G I feel the film really came out of his heart probably out of his loins as well but definitely out of his heart uh, he makes us see what this guy Kadir is all about you know Kadir knows what Anita thinks of him ana ipo nee pakkathla nikka kuda yosikkiratha paakumbod dhaan his status theriyudhu edho therla kadakra saani maadhiri and yet he explains himself to her una morchi paakradhu un mela vandu varasradhu idha enak therinja love ungalku pidikira maadhiri greeting card la rose vechi i love you la enak solla theriyadhu and thus he explains himself to us as well so i'm not saying you have to buy this explanation but we see this man slowly turn from an animal into a human being and then later he goes back on his word and actually gives her a card and a rose this is like this his inconsistency is so wonderfully human <laughs> I didn't find this kind of softness and delicacy in uh, Kadal Kondein or in uh, Thullu Bodo Ilamai. Selva Raghavan's greater fantasy films have their moments and I quite like a lot of them but this heart as you put it uh, is not there. Here's another small domestic touch that I love this playing cricket with a writing pad. It also shows how you know everybody is in such cramped quarters they are in each other's lives all the time and it makes it easier at least it made it easier for me to buy uh, the closeness of the central relationship so those are the 10 questions we picked for 7g rainbow colony thank you for sending in your questions thank you for watching and do subscribe to film companion south